Hey guys, Sovereign Source here. Welcome to a new video. March was absolutely crazy. I bought 29 gold sovereigns. I sold six ounces of gold and 400 ounces of silver. Today is April the 1st. Am I winding you all up or is this the truth? So I was just making some notes in my uh, trusty notebook and you'll see here we have a few sovereigns. We also have a few more over there in the back. And then there's a couple in that tube. And oh yeah, there's a couple in this tube. So I have been selling some bits and pieces in March. And uh, part of the reason I did it was because I wanted to tidy up the stack. And the other part of the, the reason really is because the prices went up. So for me, I was able to cash out, take some profits on various bits and pieces that I've picked up that were just basically picked up because they were bargains at the time. You'll know that the base of my stack has been sovereigns. Fill in this bloody tube. So this tube, there's a funny story behind this tube if you've not already heard it. So rather than pay like six pounds, you know, $10 for the official Royal Mint tube, which holds 25 sovereigns, I thought I would save myself a little bit of money and buy this cheap aftermarket tube for about $2, about a pound or a pound something. And the problem with this tube is it holds 47 sovereigns. So it actually costs me 22 extra sovereigns to fill. So remember, cheap isn't always cheap. Now, yeah, I was. I was picking up a fair few sovereigns this month. And I bought th uh, 29 sovereigns in the month of March. Now, the price of gold was obviously a little bit higher than it has been. But because I was selling with some very healthy profits on the silver, and I was basically selling out my gold that was a little bit higher premium and buying back lower premium gold. It meant that I ended up taking small profits, varying profits depending on the piece. And I bought back some nice sovereigns. So some of these or most of these you'll notice are shield sovereigns, which do tend to carry a bit of a premium over the bullion. A lot of them have actually been going at similar prices to what they would before the recent price increases. So what I noticed is that the premiums on these were lower percentage wise than they normally would be. I do now have 70 sovereigns, although I can't show you them all because I think about nine of them are on the way in the post. Some should probably be here tomorrow. Some will perhaps be here another day. But uh, by the time you see this video, this is all in the vault anyway. So I picked up some nice uh, Gillick Sovereigns and there's some of those are on the way. So I should have almost a date run. I'll have eight out of the 10 years of these. And I did pick up a nice young Victoria uh, from a local coin store, which must be this one. So it's from the Sydney Mint. You can see the uh, mark at the bottom, but I think I've done a video on this anyway. So yeah, I've got filthy hands, but nice clean money. And it's a bit of a strange feeling for me, actually, knowing that I was just doing a stock take, really, of what I've got. And it's basically 70 sovereigns, eight one ounce coins in the bar. So eight one ounce pieces and four half sovereigns. 2005s and one 2002. And yeah, these are all bullion in here. There's some young Victorias, there's some Gillicks, there's some old Victorias, Edwards, Georges, Elizabeths, there's all sorts. So what's the plan now then? Well, I obviously have sold some silver as well. And for me, it was an easy decision when I did the full stack video recently. It was such an effort just lugging it all around. It just really highlighted how awkward it is to store wealth. And I love silver, so I've still got, you know, over 500 ounces, probably got nearly 600 ounces of silver, maybe even close to seven. But I did sell a lot of the bullion 
So one of the issues I have with the Silver Britannias, they just tend to milk spot really easily. And when they do that, you've got some people who don't care, but a lot of buyers are put off a little bit. You know, if you've got the option of getting some newer ones for a little bit more compared to some with milk spots, they will go for them. I noticed that the 2021 Maples were beautiful condition. They were really nice. I had a couple of tubes of those. And I just sold the odds and ends of, you know, random tubes I had like kookaburras, um, kangaroos, you know, philharmonics, etc. By selling, you know, the ones that were just outliers really that I'd got because I was interested, you know, when I was starting out with silver and because they were good deals. The thing is now I have a little bit more space, so I'm not paying, you know, storage fees on all that silver. And I've basically sold around six ounces of gold but with the gold i've bought back i'm still on around 25 ounces that you can see here and moving forwards i am going to pick up silver again i'm just going to wait for some you know good deals when i see those i'll pick them up but i am going to focus mostly on the gold so silver i was sat mostly at you know 30 odd 40 percent profits even some at 50 percent uh just depending on when i bought so it was a really easy decision to move a little bit of the silver on. So maybe we'll see a nice little dip in the gold price and I'll look like a genius for selling high and buying low again, um, but maybe not. So I am, like I say, I'm sat on quite a bit of money that I would like to be invested into gold and I will be averaging that back in no matter what the price does. You know, if it keeps going up, then that's fine. If it keeps going down, then that's fine too. Yeah, the prices could go up and up and up and never cut back down this low again. And if that's the case, then then so be it. Sure, if silver doubles and gold does nothing in the next few years, then I made the wrong decision or I could have made a better decision. But, you know, I took some profits. It made a lot of sense at the time. And I'm sat on, you know, a decent amount of gold and we'll be adding to that at quite a good rate this year. I might get to 100 sovereigns this year. I think I probably will, but it depends what I do with the rest. You know, if I see some bargains elsewhere, I'll buy Brits, I'll buy, you know, almost anything if it's a really good deal. And uh, yeah, I'd like to get some of these Tudor beasts. I'm just, just waiting on the price a little bit to settle down. So hopefully we'll see those soon. In terms of the message from this video, should you be selling your gold and silver? Not necessarily, it's not what I'm suggesting. I think a bit more as, you know, some, some savings in a safe place. So just non-cash savings really for me. I'm sure I've taken good profits, but that isn't really the, you know, the purpose of getting into gold and silver for me. Uh, you know, I, I earn my everyday income from other sources, not from, you know, buying and selling coins, but certainly not an insignificant amount of money that I have managed to turn over in the metals and i do look forward to buying that back and hopefully at a lower price but maybe not you know there was people who were probably buying it around a hundred dollars an ounce in gold and were thinking god this is expensive i'm going to wait till it goes back down to 50 and yeah maybe they never bought back maybe they did at higher prices <laughs> So, Silversaurus, over and out. See you on the next video with a lot of cool gold.